Howdy folks, in this video we'll go ahead and do a review of the Sony Xperia Z3 compact phone and I got this phone just over 60 days ago so I wanted to go ahead and do a review on that hopefully some of you may find it helpful if you're on a market for a compact phone then surely there are not too many options unfortunately that are out there most manufacturers are going the super size me route on the cell phone so the nice thing about the Z3 compact is that Sony truly did not compromise too much in terms of making a compact phone yet still carry a nice punch in terms of performance so the biggest areas in my view where they did compromise and had to obviously is going to be the screen size so the display is uh, 4.6 inches on this phone uh, as opposed to the 5.2 inch display on the full Z3 version of the phone uh, the Z3 compact has two gigabytes of memory instead of three on the Z3 phone and of course battery size since the phone is smaller is at 2600 mAh the milliamp hour rating you know uh, I, th I find all of those items to be very uh, reasonable for this compact phone the display itself at 4.6 inches it is a 720p display instead of 1080 as well you know I find this to be a beautiful display on a 4.6 inch phone I have no issues with the 720p resolution I've watched HD videos on that and it is truly a beautiful display I don't have any problems with this I have been uh, looking to upgrade to another phone and I was looking at the next version um, from Google. I upgraded to the Z3 from the Google LG Nexus 4 and once Google came out with their Nexus 6, uh, again as I said I don't like the super size of my cell phone route so I decided to go with the Sony Z3 Compact and I don't have any regrets. It is a great phone and uh, it has a great battery life. Battery life is one of the things I love the most about it because it, for its compact size uh, I really can go ahead and uh, use the phone for two days uh, without any issues, without having to recharge it. Uh, if you're really using the phone a lot maybe you'll still have to charge it uh, a day and a half or so but unlike my Nexus uh, 4 phone, that cell phone that I have uh, I used to really minimize the usage of that as much as I can in order to barely charge it once a day and uh, I f found myself being able to do many more things throughout the day using the compact phone without any issues and needing to compromise whether it is uh, taking videos, doing some navigation, uh, game, gaming, whatever. Uh, it does have a very nice uh, battery life which I really love. The phone is all glass front and back and it is slippery so having a case on that is highly advisable. I'll also mention that the phone is supposed to be uh, waterproof up to 1 meter and 30 minutes uh, in clear water not salt water. Of course I'm not going to be testing that aspect. Uh, this is assuming all compartments are closed and nothing is interfering with the seal but nonetheless I'll let someone else do that testing. It's a good feature to have but I'm not going to be testing it in this video. In the front the phone has two speakers, front facing speakers, one at the top, one at the bottom. The sound is okay, it's adequate. I'm not going to say it's great, it's not bad, it is just okay. So the thing here is that if you're going to listen to music through the speakers you'll find that the music is not as rich as we would love it to be. Again. I think it's okay. Probably most people will use the headphone jack anyway and use their headphones for the music. But uh, the sound uh, that comes through them, as I said, it's okay. In the upper right hand section here you have uh, the front facing camera and it is a 2.2 megapixel camera. It does allow you to record uh, 1080p videos and using the front camera. In the upper left hand section you have a couple of things that are going on here. First you have the light sensor, so for example if you have the uh, brightness adjustment to be set to automatic, the light sensor will of course uh, be making those adjustments based on the sensor that you have uh, right here. And it also has a proximity center here as well. So if you are, uh, if the phone detects that you are talking to the phone and your face is close to the phone, it can go ahead and turn off the display 
So the proximity sensor and the light sensor are up here. The third thing that is up here is going to be the uh, LED notification light. This LED light will uh, automatically turn on anytime you're going to charge the phone. When the phone is charging, it is an amber light, and the phone uh, LED will change to green if you're 90% or above in terms of phone charge. There is no way to turn this off, unfortunately. This is one of the features that to me, it does bother me at night, so I don't like seeing any lights or anything along those lines. So what I ended up doing, I had to get a light manager, and if you're like me and you don't want to see those lights, you'll probably go the same route until Sony makes this as a feature. So you'll use the light manager and then you can change the LED notification light during charge cycle to a different custom color to make it as dim as possible. You can't turn it off 100% but you can make it fairly dim. Uh, Sony does give you the option to actually turn on or off LED notifications for regular notifications, emails, SMS, etc. But for charges there is no way to do that presently. Hopefully, maybe they're going to listen to this video and then allow us to toggle an option to turn off uh, the charge LED light. Obviously, some of you may like that, so that would not be an issue for you. In the back of the phone here, we have several things that are going on as well. We have a front-facing camera. This camera shoots at 20.7 megapixels, but this camera also can do 4K video. Obviously, you can still do 1080 as well, but with the 4K video, you will be getting a warning uh, letting you know that if the phone uh, temperature gets to be too high, the phone will turn off the camera in order to obviously preserve itself so that it doesn't auto destruct. But basically, I was able to record 10 to 12 minutes of 4K video before the app actually shut down. And it does give you a warning, maybe one to two minutes, uh, roughly. Uh, again, it all depends on the temperature. So initially, it'll give you a warning saying that the temperature is too high. If you can continue, keep continuing recording, it will turn off the camera. But this uh, front facing camera is at 20.7 uh, megapixels, and it is a G Lens camera. Next to it we have the flash and it is an interesting uh, architecture the way they are utilizing it. When you're taking a picture you can actually use the full LED bulb uh, the full, at, at its full brightness. However, if you're going to use the flashlight setting to use the slide as a flashlight, whether it's an app or any of the settings that you will get in, on the phone, you will only get maybe 30 to 40, potentially 50% of the brightness that this bulb can do. So it is something to be aware of in case you really like bright flashlights, you won't get very much brightness out of this uh, thing other than when you're getting uh, a picture taken. Otherwise, 30 to 40 percent, as I said, maybe 50, but that may be pushing it. Further down here, uh, behind the cover, it is not removable and neither is the battery. But uh, under the cover, we have the NFC chip right here, indicated by the NFC logo. And for those that are a bit more curious what's going on behind the scenes, uh, again, you cannot remove the cover, but in this section right here, you will have the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth antennas. And then in this section here, you will have the GPS, and that is according to the manual. I did not remove the cover, obviously. Uh, I don't want to avoid the warranty. Uh, neither do I want to break the phone. It is all glass phone, it is slippery, and a good case is advisable. On the right side of the phone, we have the power button, and the thing is that probably most people, if you end up getting this phone, don't have to use it too much because by double tapping on the on the display will actually wake up the phone. So rarely do you have to use the power button unless you actually want to turn off the display. Generally, the power uh, or the double tapping works fine. In rare cases, the phone kind of goes into its deep sleep mode or hibernating mode, I don't know. So it may take a couple of tries of double tapping to wake it up. It generally is not an issue right away. But if you're going to let this phone sit 10, 20 minutes, sometimes an hour or so, uh, and then try to wake it up, in some cases it will have to uh, think about it or, you know, you do a couple of attempts. One trick that I use, sometimes actually triple tap, one, two, three, and then sometimes the first tap kind of wakes it up up and then the second the double tap after that kind of uh, wakes up the screen so one of those things that it works sometimes it's being a little bit inconsistent but it works 
Um, the other things that are on the right side of the phone is the volume keys, so up and down. Uh, very convenient uh, to use uh, uh, in one hand because all of the buttons are basically that you need to use are really on this side, so you can use them with your thumb. And one of my favorite uh, functions of this camera that is fairly unique is that it has its dedicated camera button. So all you need to do is press and hold. You'll see that the phone will automatically uh, turn on and launch the camera app and you can take the picture right away, which is really cool. It will also let you browse the pictures that you have taken, but you cannot browse back to look at any of the existing pictures that are on the phone. If you want to do that, it will return and ask you to put in a passcode. So it keeps the phone locked. But, to take a picture, press and hold, take a picture. So, I really do like this function. On the top of the phone, you have the uh, one of the two microphones, and you also have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then on the bottom of the phone, you have the second microphone, and then you also have a phone strap hole in order to put a phone strap through it. Even though I've never seen anybody do that, I guess you can get a phone strap and fish it through those holes. On the left side of the phone here we have a few things that are actually going on and the bottom section here we do have the SIM, uh, the my, nano SIM card slot right here and then below that since we do not have a removable cover we it, we still need to access to some of the phone's information so the way to get that is by using tweezers and you pull out this thing and then on the back here you have some phone information, serial number, model, etc. So that's the way they're doing this to get some of the phone information. The next thing right here, I don't know what it is. Nobody knows what that is and if you do, please leave me a comment or send me a message. It's not in the manual. It's, that thing is not going to come out. I don't know what it is. It is some sort of a slot opening that has something in there but um, nobody knows what that is. So if you do, please let me know. And then in this section right here, we have the micro USB port to, to charge the phone. This is one of the two ways to charge the phone. Uh, I don't like utilizing this port for charging, so I actually use the magnetic options here, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but if you want to, you know, put information on the phone, connect it to your computer, charge it. This is a micro USB port and it also has the micro SD card. The phone supports up to 128 gigabytes of a micro SD card. Right now I have a 64 gigabyte uh, SD, micro SD card in there and I use that uh, for 4K video recording. I do put all the videos straight onto the SD card. It's not the recommended method but if you do have a good SD card that can handle fast writes uh, to the card you can you should be able uh, to put 4k videos right on it without utilizing the phone's uh, 16 gigabyte um, space that comes by default and the last thing that is going on on the left side of the phone here are the magnetic charge ports you can charge the phone in addition to the micro USB charge port that you have right here behind the cover you can actually charge the phone magnetically this is the way that I like to do it I don't like messing with the cover you can use a Sony cradle to do that or alternatively you can get one of those cords uh, either like via eBay third-party cords or I think Sony sells those as well and then you can charge your phone by attaching the magnetic port right here. So keep this in mind that if you are using one of the third-party cords, even though the magnet may work, uh, you do want to make sure that the contacts are actually lined up well because some of the third-party cords are a bit flimsy to be honest. So you really do want to make sure that the contacts are lined up well in order for the phone to start charging. In terms of picture quality, when it comes to this 20.7 megapixel uh, camera on this phone, I'll say this, that when you have good lighting, you will have good pictures. When you don't have good lighting, the picture quality quickly deteriorates. So it's not as good as I would have hoped, but in good lighting conditions, it does take really good pictures. I will include some pictures in this video, and I'll also include a link to a video I will record with 4K using this camera. Since this specific video is done in 1080, I can't include it here, but I will include a link in the description to the 4K video. 
In terms of using the camera, it is a fairly simple, straightforward app that comes with uh, the Sony phone. It always starts in the intelligent mode, and then from there you can actually change it to something else. If you stay in the intelligent mode, you can press the camera to take a picture or the red button here to actually do a video. But then if you don't want to do the intelligent mode, you can control more options using the manual mode, so you can control the scene using some of the pre-selected options. You can control the white balance, whether or not you want the flash, and also change which camera you want to utilize. Other than the manual mode, it has several other effects, such as uh, face-in option, which allows you to use both cameras at the same time and record that. If you do want to record in 4K, this is the 4K option. It has some time shift, you can stream live to YouTube, creative effects, panorama, and then you can also download other items. It is a straightforward uh, option and um, not something that most people will have an issue with in my opinion. In terms of user experience and the Android uh, system here, uh, thankfully Sony did not mess it up too much like some manufacturers can. It is for the most part uh, very authentic to the original um, Android. They did make some changes, so if you're going to go into the apps, they do have a sliding menu where you can actually uninstall some apps uh, using uh, the settings here. You can order the apps in a different uh, format, alphabetically most used, installed, etc. But generally it is a very smooth experience in terms of navigating things uh, on the phone. It has the uh, Google uh, Now, should you choose to utilize this. And uh, I do not have any issues in terms of the way Sony presents uh, this phone using the Android operating system. This phone is eligible for the Lollipop release. Uh, I know Sony made an announcement that they will release an update to the Sony Z uh, X3 and uh, some of the other Sony Z uh, lineup phones with the Lollipop uh, release. So that is coming up. But uh, even using the existing uh, version of the Android, I don't have any complaints. It is very responsive. I can utilize it without any issues. The phone has two speakers, one at the top, one at the bottom, and the sound is okay. I'm not going to say it's great. I think it's adequate. All right, let's see how this phone handles uh, games. Uh, this is Real Racing 3. I honestly don't use it much for gaming. I use my tablet for that, but just to show you how the phone handles it. Alright, well that's all that I have for this review. Hopefully you guys have found it helpful and beneficial. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to let me know. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day now. Bye.